Hi everybody, uh, excuse the poor production value and sound quality on this episode, but I'm literally in the workshop fog finding today, so um, I got asked by a supplier of the Nanguan tubes here in uh, Melbourne to see if I can replicate a fault that another gaffer had, because I've got actually 12 of these, so if anyone's going to find it, it's going to be me. So the problem was uh, tubes crashing in master and slave mode, so after about three hours of testing I've managed to replicate the faults, so I'm going to share with you how that fault occurs. Okay, to help illustrate and explain the, uh, the situation, these ones are the slaves. Now, running individually, I've got them set to white light. And this back tube is our master, so when that's turned on, all of these will go into a color chase mode. Okay, so I'll turn on the master, now all these will become slaves, and they'll work together in a simultaneous color chase, all beautifully. Turn that back off, and these tubes will default back to their internal settings, which I've got set to white. Okay, so the problem occurs when you're turning the system off. Okay, so if you turn off in the wrong sequence, what happens, and it's happened on uh, these tubes here, is they seem to crash. So no matter, turn it on and off, um, yeah, it's, it's acting dead. But I've got it on under good authority from the gaffer who crashed his that um, plug them back into the charger after a while, they will turn back on. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Okay. So what we've discovered, or what I've discovered, is if you turn, if you have them in master and slave mode, and you've got the master turned on, and you start turning the tubes off, sometimes a pulse goes through to the other lights. They will literally pulse brighter. So uh, there you go, you've got a bit of a flicker. Um, so yeah, that tends to happen. So what can happen when you do that is one of the tubes just crashes, and that's it. So what I've discovered is if you turn the master off, Okay, so these have all gone back to individual modes now. When you turn the individual lights off, now they're not running in master and slave mode, uh, you don't get a problem. So that's the easy way around that. Okay, so the problem is not really a huge issue once you know about it. And um, basically, to get around the problem, what you need to do when you're turning the system off is turn the master off first. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now let's get into another fault that I found. Okay, so the next fault I've discovered in master and slave mode happens only if you're running more than 10 tubes. Okay, so at the moment I've got uh, uh, 11 tubes running just to show the fault. So they're all running fine. You make your adjustments, they all uh, time into each other, so I'm going to change the color. Okay, they've all timed in. Now, when you've got more than 10 tubes running, when you're making adjustments to your colors, some of the tubes will flicker. So there you go, that one's pulsing away. So you saw that one pulsing. Now, just to illustrate, I'll do that with uh, 10 tubes. So I've turned off number 11, so no pulsings going on. Okay, so I'm changing the color, there's no problem at all. So that's only something that happens if you're making changes. If you're not making changes, that doesn't happen and it only happens if you're running more than 10 tubes. So where that could be a problem is say you're running a RGB color chase. Okay, so all the tubes are running perfectly fine at the moment, all synced into each other. Okay, nothing's flickering, everything's looking beautiful. Let's turn on tube number 11 and see what happens in the equation. Now some of them are flickering when the color changes happen. Now, I can't think of any job where I'd be running um, 10 tubes for in a color chase. I can't really think of any job where I'd be running tubes in a color chase, to be quite honest with you. Color chase is not something we tend to do in film and television because it gives you continuity problems when you're doing your editing. So I don't think that's ever going to be a problem for me. Um, the next one I'm going to show is a problem I discovered last week with these tubes. And um, it's a handy thing to know, and if I hadn't have done a period drama that required a candlelit scene, I never would have come across this fault. So I discovered this fault last week, and that's the um, in fire mode, in candle mode, if you've got the tubes dimmed down to 15%, the uh, four-footers have a really nice amber glow to them, but the two-footers are a yellowy green. 
So they don't match in at all. So there you go. You can sort of see it there if you're looking really closely at the color difference. Now, when they're running at full brightness, they're all the same color. It's just that when you dim them to about 15% and below, um, the two footers go green. So there you go. I think I've got it there exposed correctly. You can see there's a color difference. Okay, so um, that's pretty much the day come to a close. Uh, once again, I've had a day off and I've achieved nothing that I set out to do. So um, I didn't an anticipate this morning that I'd be spending uh, three to four hours in my workshop uh, fault finding and testing lights. So there you go. Um, uh, look, if you're looking to be a gaffer or pretty much anybody in the film and television industry, you need to have a network around you. You need to, to know people who do the same job as you and um, that can really help you like for example um, another gaffer discovered this fault and um, if he hadn't have discovered it i probably would have discovered it on set and that's the worst time to discover faults now the problem with lighting is it's all getting electronic so we do have more and more little glitches like this which are um uh, you have to find and and be aware of and that's why i've set up this channel to share this information now, um, I'd just like to point out that I'm not slagging off these Nanguan tubes. I love them, and I'd have no hesitation in buying more of them. And compared to the old fluorescent tubes that we used to use, these things have got hardly any problems. And um, look, compared to other tubes that are out there that cost twice as much, these tubes are great. But if you're looking to buy these tubes, hopefully you're a bit more educated and you know, uh, know the faults. And if you own these tubes, well, hopefully you know of these faults now and you're not going to discover them on set the hard way. I'm Andrew Locke. See you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear, which will hopefully have some better production value.